This is my uh, 1980 Remington model, 30 on 6. Hey! Bradley's smoking nice. Well, I put a split ring on it. Did you see that? Grizzly Country Outdoors. This is Grizzly Country Outdoors. This is Grizzly Country Outdoors. Now, this rifle, this is what I'm going to go deer hunting with this year. Back at the end of deer hunting season last year, I started working up hand loads for it. And, uh, I've produced a whole bunch of loads with really nice consistent velocities but no matter what I did all my groups I had stringing so the, the group would be walking sideways more or less and what that tells you is I have barrel contact up here in the forehand somewhere so as the barrel heats up that extra tension that's in that spot as the barrel heats up it pushes it and that makes the your group walk so that's what we got to figure out here yeah <laughs> dollar bill not really 50 cent canadian tire coupon back when they still issued these that's a keeper that so when i pull that in here that actually feels it actually feels pretty good. Um, because I had uh, taken the rifle out of the stock, my, my trouble started um, when I did a trigger draw. And I tuned the trigger up beautifully. Nice, nice light trigger. Like, it's sweet. Sweet. But, this is a Wildcat Composite stock. And I had this stock or action uh, glass bedded into this so when I took the stock apart in order to do the trigger job I messed up that glass bedding and what possibly could be happening I, there could be a little bit of debris left in the bedding blocks that, that affected the the barrel contact so, I mean that feels awfully good that just slides right down there Here's a little bit of a thicker piece. I want to see what, the, what this one does. Okay, so r from here, that slides perfectly all the way, but right at the end, right in here. Oh yeah. There's definitely contact right at the end of the forehand. So what I got to do, I talked to the gunsmith at the, the shop that actually glass bedded this for me. And uh, he advised me to take it back out, look in the two recess lugs where, where the bedding blocks go, and make certain there isn't some tiny amount of debris, particularly at the, at the rear one, that's canting the barrel to, to produce this contact. Make sure they're clear. And he said then, the second thing is, when I put it back together, he said, make certain that the rear bedding lug is anchored and sucked down tight first. Because if you, you suck this other one down too much too soon, that's when you're going to bring that barrel down and cause this. Because right there, that's definitely tight. So what I do, I'm going to take it out of the, I'm going to take the action out of the stock. I'm going to check and see if there's anything in there uh, and then I'll put it back together with emphasis on securing this rear bedding block first and then I'll check this contact again and if it's still there then I have to take it back out of the action one more time and relieve this a little bit uh, just take a piece of coarse sandpaper 
put it around a uh, socket of the dimension that wants to fit in there and just, you know, lightly, lightly sand it out, right? Okay, so let's do this. Alright, I can tell you that uh, the way this action was bedded, man, they did a beautiful job. This is so tight, so snug. Okay. Well, there's no way, there's no way that anything is interfering with that fit. No way. That's as clean as clean can be. Alright. Now, when you look at the fore end right here, you can actually see there's a little spot right there. A little wee bit of rust. That's actually that's actually showing me where the contact is. Look at that. And that makes sense, see, because it's not centered. It's it's to the one side slightly. Yeah, that, so that totally explains my group's stringing. And you know what? I know that there's nothing wrong with the way this was uh, bedded in here. Um, what I will do, when I put it back together, I will emphasize tightening the rear bedding screw first. But I'm going to take and I'm going to go and do the uh, sandpaper and relieve that area a little bit and then I'll put it back together okay I got a half inch and a 9 16 and I got 150 grit sandpaper that was the coarsest grit I had so start with this half inch here Actually, when I wrap it that much, oh, oh, that's a perfect fit. That little bit right there was enough to remove the rust spot. As I worked the socket back and forth, I was also rotating it there, you might notice. see some material coming out so also I used the half inch socket first with the uh, sandpaper wrapped around it and then I went up to the uh, 9 16 socket which uh, moved, removed a little bit more material. I'll throw the 9 16 on there and see what it feels like. I'm going to call that good. I moved enough material to make fiberglass dust. Yeah. Now, this old stock, I had this thing put together. Oh, geez. 20, 25 years ago. I, I, I forget, to be honest. Long time. These KNS uh, KNS gunsmiths, great gunsmith, and uh, Wildcat composite stock. You you can't buy a better stock. Super light, stronger than hell. Really well made, made in Edmonton. But I'm gonna freshen up the paint on this old girl. So I gotta run up the street and get me a can of spray paint. <laughs> Back from my little trip to buy paint. Uh, 
not happening. It was going to send me back 30 bucks just to put fresh paint on the gun. It wasn't going to change the accuracy one bit. Heck with it. If you're going to wear that same old 20 year old. So. What we've got to do. That was tight before, just smooth now. Uh, that's what we want. Now hopefully, once we're, once we're all tightened up, she's still... ...maintains that contact, or lack of. Now, here we go. Let's see. That is definitely, unquestionably better than it was. shooting those last tab loads. Gotta throw together. I, I had, geez, I had a half a dozen loads that were absolutely fine and they just had stringing because of that contact and I'll bet you any of those loads that I was shooting, I'll bet you they're fired good. But my book's upstairs. days since I rigged around with the 30 odd 6 and rebedded the action in the stock. Not rebedded, but fitted it, fitted it back in the stock. And that was really hard to do, which because this uh, had been glass bedded before, I had a bugger of a time getting the magazine box to fit in due to how tight it is because of the bedding joint. She went together, and as I tested previously, we have no tension whatsoever now barrel to uh, four end. So I uh, I went through all my loading records and 56.5 grains of Hodgkin's 43.50. I had really good velocity, and as I recall showed promising accuracy. So what we're doing now is going to load five rounds. We'll go to the range and shoot them. If I get that same consistent velocity and I hope please accuracy. So at this point we're just going to skip this reloading process because there's nothing to see. I'm loading 56 and a half grains of Hodgson's 4350. Uh, Winchester brass, Winchester primers, just standard uh, large rifle primers. 
and we're gonna go see what happens at the range. And you'll see it wasn't the greatest route. Well, there you go. That's pretty terrible, really. I fired five shots quick. Never let the barrel cool. Well, I, actually the barrel just heated up. I let it because I wanted to see what would happen when I did shoot it hot. Jiminy, I guess we gotta we gotta go back to one of those other loads that I had around 55 grains because I had better accuracy. Okay. So I'm one of those people that I live in the world of arbitrary decisions, and I had been loading these to a cartridge overall length of 3.35 inches. 30 odd six max is supposed to be 3.40 inches. And I didn't like the look of it. And it's as simple as the way the candy lure is on those Hornady 180 boat tail saw points. I didn't like the way it was seated. So I just arbitrarily seated the bullets in until I had that candy lure just to the edge of the neck of the cartridge. And then I took and loaded 56 grains of Hodgson's 4350 and bang, we all of a sudden got a hunting load. Well, it's October 28th and after a lot, a lot of frigging around, I finally found what I'm going to use. This is my hunting load. Now that's not the greatest group in the world. These squares are one inch, of course. We've got two right here and then, and actually I checked after three shots. These were my first three shots and then I fired two more right here what's crazy about that 180 grain Hornady boat tail saw point 56 grains of Hodgson's 4350 and I loaded these to a length of 3.273 um, and if you reference nozzler load data some of the factory loads they were shooting were 3.3 3.21 even on some of them so this is definitely ballpark and <laughs> to be honest I loaded this at this length for one reason and that's on the uh, crimp ring on the bullet that seated the crimp ring just ahead of the neck which I don't know to me it's not it's not scientific it just looks right to me that's the only reason I did it and the velocity you got is crazy with a 180 grain bullet, 2,900 feet per second, 2,895, 2,898, 2,891, and 2,898. So max velocity with 180 grain in the 30 odd six is supposed to be 2,819 feet per second. So I'm a little bit above that. I had no signs of pressure. Just crazy how consistent that velocity was. So that's it. That's a keeper. It's going to be my deer hunting load, 2022. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.